Hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last episode, we went looking for Valorin, a young Dalish teenager who ran off, hadn't returned, and as we discovered, he had done some sort of blood magic ritual that went terribly awry. It killed him. He was looking for something called Lindarane's Talisman. Now, we have picked up his effects, so I, I do think we should go and tell his sister as soon as possible. Now then, uh, it's Emily and she's... Is this you? Yeah, there you are. Please, if you see my brother out there, tell him to return to camp. I'm, I'm so sorry, madam. I'm so sorry, but I, I did find him. I'm sorry, but I found your brother. What? What do you mean, sorry? Where is he? No, he's not. I have his belongings. Is this, is this all that's left? Did you learn nothing else? He was brave. Teenagers are stupid. Blood magic. Ooh. What's the point in letting her know that he died because he was doing blood magic? Like, those last few journal entries, they seemed so bitter. You know, oh, I was passed over, I wasn't nominated as first, I'm an adult, so I'm gonna go get this talisman. All of the other hunters were scared, but I'm not scared, and now I'm gonna go do some blood magic. Like... What is the point in telling her that? Yes, it's honest. It is the honest thing to do. But it doesn't really add anything. Do you get what I'm saying? All that will tell her is, hey, your little brother died because he was trying to do something fucked and stupid. Like, that, that helps no one. That helps no one and nothing. So it's between... It's between these two. Oh. Was he brave? He he really wasn't. I guess this... This is a... We have a bold-faced lie and we have complete honesty. So it's honest, but it's hurtful. And this is like, oh, he died bravely... You know, maybe he died fighting to protect an orphaned Dalish child. Like, we could make up anything. And it's nice. It lets her remember her brother in a really positive fashion. But it is also an outright lie. I'm trying to think, what's, what is Ionor's relationship with the truth? Because here's the thing. She wants people to know that she isn't Andraste's Herald. She wants to shout it from the rooftops. The truth is, I am not Andraste's Herald. I am not... The, the focus of the new Chantry, like, the, no, they are a different thing. I do not belong with those people. I don't even believe in the Maker. Like, what is this? This is nonsense. However, she acknowledges that doing so would cause a lot of harm to a lot of innocent people. People are looking up to her. You know, she, oh, that's the Herald of Andraste. She's going to save us. And if she shouted, you know, complete honesty, it would break their hearts. So Ionor is willing to lie. She's willing to lie for the greater good. But is, that's my question, is this the greater good? I'm drawn to this. This is the, the middle option. It's a moderate stance. He did do something stupid, which is honest, 
and we are omitting the fact that he used blood magic. And I've said before, Ionor's a moderate. See, I think, hopefully this doesn't come out as too crass. That's the one thing I'm like, ugh, like, Ionor would have empathy. She'd say this in a sympathetic way, so I'm... I'm not too sure about this. Well, young people are foolish. All he wanted was to prove himself. But he didn't have to. The clan loves him. Harwin loves him. I wish he'd understood that. Thank you for bringing me the news. It's better than not knowing. That was okay. He did something foolish. Which is true. And I... This'll, this'll sound weird, saying like, oh, he was brave, he died doing something heroic. That could give her, not exactly false memories of her brother, but she could create this, like, whole legend about how, like, oh, he saved uh, a sacred Hala and an orphan Dalish child, and he also cured cancer, and, like, he did all of this shit, and then he died tragically. And it's... You know, building him up more than he was. And I think that can be just as damaging as being completely honest. Because either way, you are destroying the true memory of the person. Does that make sense? It's really hot in the back room. It is a hot summer day. And uh, Gilbert is quite toasty and he's right next to me. So I'm just like, I'm so hot. I'm sweating cobs, please. Please let this make sense. But, you know, saying, oh, he did blood magic, he was stupid. She's going to have a really negative memory of her brother. If we say, oh, he was incredibly brave, he did all of this shit. She's going to have a much too positive memory of her brother. Her The real memory she has is going to be consumed by what we tell her. I think I think that was the right thing. Oh, I, I know. We helped. Their lives are better because of us. Indeed. Indeed they are, Cole. And you know what? We know he was looking for something in this area. Let's let's go track that down. You know, maybe maybe if we can get the amulet back, give it to them, then you know, maybe maybe his death won't seem quite so senseless or meaningless. Also, it gives me an opportunity to pick up a lot of spindleweed. We, oh, what, what? Given how that's moving, I want to say that's wolves. It is! I, oh, hello. You popped in out of nowhere. But yeah, I... I know wolves on my mini-map when I see them. Now that, sir, sir the, the veil must be so thin, because, like, you popped in out of nowhere. I saw that. Fuck off. Do a scream. And do a spinny spin. Yes. Keep on it, keep on it. Excellent. And it didn't even drop anything. How rude. How utterly, utterly rude of that rage demon. Tut tut. I feel, aha, uh -huh, yes. I remember this little nook. Thank you kindly. Love letter. Rosies are red, pansies are yellow. How are you doing away from your fellow? Dear Valerie, I wrote that for you. I hope you like it. I'm deep in the usurper's territory, but I've kept out of sight. One of my many talents. It's been hard, but the thought of you keeps me alive. I'll be home as soon as our Empress wins the day. Missing you, Albane. P.S. I know pansies aren't always yellow. I couldn't think of any other yellow flowers. Daffodils? Daffodils are yellow buttercups. Uh, my favourite flowers are snapdragons. They're such a such a bright, vivid orange. I love that. 
And then daisies, because daisies I think are cute. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hello. You're right. Fishman, why did you have two spider totems? That's weird. Also, yeah, I do see this. Another very lovely statue of Fenharel. I think, I do think Iron Ore would love seeing all the old architecture, the old elven architecture. I've mentioned this before. She's not, she really isn't an elfy elf, but she does have an, ooh, it's a shrine to Silaze. Okay. Um, she does have an interest in elven history. I see you, so I'm going to finish my thought. She has an interest in elven history, but she'd rather work towards a better future. If her clan ever passed by, you know, a, a site of historical importance, then yeah, like, let's, let's go have a little bit of a look-see. Is it really dangerous? Oh, it's infested with spiders and like undead maybe let's give that a pass like that sounds kind of shitty someone could get hurt but like if it's if it's empty and we're passing nearby then sure why not she wouldn't go out of her way to look for stuff as i said the future is a lot more important to iron ore than the past hello you're right scream and another spinny spin Yes. Keep on him. Now, where, where are you going? Why are you running? Done, and done. done indeed. Sweet. What are you guarding? Oh, hell, I see you there. Silaze, the half keeper. Silaze the Hearthkeeper is seen as the sister of Anjuil the Huntress. While Anjuil loved to run with the creatures of the wild, Silaze preferred to stay by her home tree, occupying herself with gentle arts and song. It is Silaze who gave us fire and taught us how to use it. It is Silaze who showed us how to heal with herbs and with magic, and how to ease the passage of infants into this world. And again, it is Silaze who showed us how to spin the fibres of plants into thread and rope. We owe much to Silaze, and that is why we sing to her when we kindle the fires and when we put them out. That is why we sprinkle our aravels with Silaze's fragrant tree moss and ask that she protect them and all within. As told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralafarin clan of the Dalish elves. Again, these are... These are such pretty tales. And I think they... They really mimic various myths. Veilfire. Indeed. Um, yeah, they really well mimic various tales and myths that we have, you know, in the real world. Like the, the Norse myths, the Greek myths, certain African myths. I think... The, the elven myths we see in Dragon Age, they do such a good job of mimicking those real world mythoses. And I think that's, how do I put it? I think that's why so many people believed them. Because, you know, art imitated real life. And it was like, oh yeah, well that sounds like this story. I mean, Fen Harel sounds so much like Loki from you know norse mythology and i ooh, i like that i know that was probably a conscious decision because again they wanted to hammer home that these are myths that were passed down someone had to come up with them they're not necessarily based in reality and bearing in mind this is a world of magic this is a world where you know having a bunch of gods those could exist. You know, in Dungeons and Dragons, you have a whole plethora of gods in the pantheon. 
I'd name a few, but the only one I know off the top of my head is Lolf, the uh, the spider goddess. She's the only one whose name I can remember. But, you know, this is a world where you could very easily see, oh yeah, they have a shit ton of gods, that makes sense. But then... It's a nice touch. If you if you understand what I'm getting at, that is a nice touch. The Elven Glyphs. Pascal, August is on the trail of some Elven mystery. If what I've heard is true, I don't want that pompous ass getting his hands on it. Think he's smug now? He's searching for ruins. I know at least two. The ancient baths and the ruin in Enervurus. You know the one. Remember the mead? Get going. I'll send a messenger if I hear more. Do hame. Mm. Now then, uh, first things first, let's get this glyph. Okay, what do you say? Ancient elven glyphs. The revealed symbols show a hawk and a hare chasing the sun. Hmm. But Solus doesn't have anything to say on the matter. Okay. Come on. Down you go. Fist it. <laughs> oh, and it's nothing even to fight. It is just a body. We have ancient elven robes, Linda Rani's talisman, a lost Dalish artifact, and the ring of doubt. A young Tavinta Magister forced into an arranged marriage enchanted this, his wedding ring, with the power of invisibility. That's sneaky. That's sneaky. I like that. Indeed, we have we have the talisman. You have any advice for fighting demon Solus? Survive the first thirty heartbeats, and you have already won. So I should try not to die. Helpful. I mean that demons are rarely intelligent enough to change their tactics. If you focus on defending yourself. You will see the full range of their abilities within the first 30 heartbeats. By then, you should be able to find a weakness and exploit it. Ah, that is helpful. I will try to remember that. Also, try not to die. <laughs> that is pretty good advice. Try not to die. I try and follow that advice every single day. I want that tattooed on me. <laughs> try not to die. Wonderful advice, Solus. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, that's that's all there is here. Um, <laughs> I do also want to deal with this. I'm kind of dealing with the uh, the southern portion of the map first. I know this is right here. I know this is right here, but yeah, I'm I'm saving that. I'm saving that because I really like that quest. There isn't anything. No, I, I couldn't remember if there was something pinned up there. There is not. Ooh, there we go. Come on, up and over. Now then, I'm sure this doesn't make up for Valorin's loss. You know, she'd be a she'd be a pretty bitchy sister if she was like my brother or an ancient elven artifact. Hmm. Yeah, the elven artifact is totes better. Fuck my brother. I never really liked the guy. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm sure this talisman doesn't it's not gonna replace her brother. I'm sure she would much rather have her brother back than this doohickey, but hopefully, considering he was looking for this, hopefully it might bring her some peace or some comfort. then, madam. Where are you at? You're still fixing your Aravel. Thank you for finding Valorin. I hope he passes peacefully into the beyond. Uh, yeah. Me, me too. But I, I did find the talisman he was looking for. I found this talisman. I think your brother was looking for it. You should have it. Linda Rani's talisman? It, it exists? Her sword, Eva Nura taken by Shens. But in the story, her talisman was saved and hidden. This will mean so much to our people. Thank you. Hey, it is, it is all good. No worries, chicken. No worries. Also, ooh, we're getting close. Solus! 
Do not disrespect their fast travel spot. The hell? Now that with that done, let's go check out what did they call it Var Bellinaris? The uh, the resting place. We'll go check that out. Now then, if you recall, he did mention, the Keeper that is, he did mention that this is an ancient resting site of the ancient elves. Please be respectful. That was the game telling you, hey, you might not want to loot this area indiscriminately because, you know, they are nearby. They might get kind of pissy with you if you just start looting the graves of their ancestors. Now, this, this does go against the Callista plays promised. Promise, excuse me, no loot gets left behind. Ah, it's mine now. Var Bellinaris. Var Bellinaris, our eternity, where hundreds of our ancestors are buried, where those of us who can still lay our kin to rest. Although this land now belongs, now belongs to Orlay, the Shemlin have never reclaimed it. Perhaps their guilty conscience stops them. Or perhaps those uncomplimentary tales of elven curses and vengeful spirits have some use after all. Keeper Gishrel of the Ralafarian clan. It was the latter. They're, they're shit scared of elven curses, let's be honest. That's what's stopping them. Now the Embryum. Embryum, you can come with us, but anything that is in a grave... Oh. Old pain resting. We should let them sleep. Okay, cool. Uh, no loot gets left behind, but elves. The elves will be pissed. This pains me. This pains me so much. Spinny spin. Ooh. There we go. Scream. There we go. Keep on him. Keep on hitting. Keep on hitting. There we go, you're down. Who next? Where? Oh, there. You're down. Oh, oh Solus. Grab him, there we go. No hurting the mage. And there we go, that was that. Oh, God, I, can... I see so many things. Dinging. My mini-map. I, meh, meh, I want to loot. I want to loot everything. We're not, we're not going to touch the graves. We're not going to touch them. I'm just going to have a wee bit of an explore because this, this is an entire area. Oh, rash vine, we can always use some more of that. We're not... We're not touching the graves, but they call to me. They call to me and whisper, Callista, loot us. We'll miss you if you go, loot us. Oh, no, I won't. I don't trust you. You say that's an examine, but I do not trust you. I actually want to say, I have in my head that there's a, a little chest in one of these gaps here. Right there. Aha. I don't, ooh, that's useful. I don't think, I think it's just destroying the graves. I think that's the only thing that counts as grave robbing. And you. Thank you kindly. Yeah, Unadine Grotto. And it requires the tomb key. Guess where the tomb key is? Why? Why? Now, I'm... I'm kind of going to show you a little bit of a way to cheat the system. Because here's the thing. If you go back and uh, tell the Keeper, hey, we cleared out the spirits, I haven't done any grave robbing, 
and then you come back and do some grave robbing. No one will ever know. They'll never find out. Don't question it. It's fine. It's it's a little bit cheesy. You are kind of oh shit. Hello. You're right. Spinny spin. <laughs> oh. Cute. Do a bat. Take him out. Take him out. Oh, oh, bloody hell. We have potions, though. Okay. Come on. Keep at it. Do a bat. <laughs> Fuck you. Spinny spin. Do a scream. Come on. Oh, oh, are you dead? <gasps> hey, it's our first heraldic symbol. Excellent. Excellent. Sweet. So we didn't have to kill that guy. Hey, okay. You weren't a dick. You were a champion. Is there a difference? I don't know. Ooh, some high of a weave. Lovely. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry for killing your... A te well, one of your attendants is dead. That guy got spared, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for killing your other guy. Sorry, I, th I thought you were some dickheads. Easy mistake to make with all lesions. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ironor would never say that. That is me. <laughs> that is me, Callista, saying that. That doesn't make it any better, Callista. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to blame the heat. I'm going to blame the heat on my Orlesian, for my Orlesian hatred. There we go. Evan, sir. So, yeah, I, I dealt with the, the angry spirits. Your turn. Uh, yeah, we, we know what the dearth is. Yeah, the demons are all gone. I've destroyed the demons on your sacred ground. You were successful. You put an old man's heart at ease. Thank you. You have done us a great kindness. There we go. And Lorinil is willing to join. If I may share something else with you. Oh. The strange glyphs inscribed in the stones of this place. Revealed only with field fire. Although they are elven in origin. I cannot make out their purpose. Perhaps they will mean something to you. Hey, look. Luckily, we have a, an elven expert with us. Oh, so we can't we can't ask about Laurenil now. Darith Shiral, Darith. Indeed. Not Laurenil. Greetings to you. Uh, no, I didn't want to speak to you, Nissa. I don't believe it. You convinced the keeper. He said I can join the Inquisition if I wish. Hell yeah! Keeper Howen has given you permission to join the Inquisition. He has. I'll report to your camp in the south, if that's all right. Carry on, agent. Oh, buddy, you don't... You don't have to bow. You really don't. Aneth Ara, Harold. Eh. Hey. I'll take my leave. Excellent. Excellent. It feels like ages since we are uh, we had an agent join us. There we go. Now then, I am almost out of time for this episode. So, let's read some codex entries. I do have time tonight. Uh, you. Prophet's Laurel. According to Orlesian folklore, Andraste's followers and sympathizers tossed sprigs of laurel in her path as she was led to her pyre. After she burned, her ashes blew across the leaves on the ground, bestowing upon them their famed purifying qualities. It is just a tale, of course. The laurel was recognised as a healing herb long before Andraste's time. Ancient Tavinta scrolls describe the use of the laurel in poultices, tinctures, and even incense. Though the legend might be pure fabrication, the laurel will always be symbolic of Andraste's sacrifice. Its glossy, dark leaves represent the Sword of Mercy, the red berries, the drops of her blood upon it. An excerpt from the Botanical Compendium by Inez Arantia, Botanist. 
Rash vine. Be wary when harvesting rash vine because the plant comes by its name honestly. Indeed, calling its effect upon exposed skin a rash is an understatement. I've known apprentices who went without treating the red sores, assuming them irritating but harmless, and eventually required either magical healing or amputation. Once the poison gets into the blood, it causes a painful calcification that turns the surface of the skin stone grey, and that's only the first symptom. In addition, it's primarily found in marshes and remote areas of deep vegetation, so there is often danger in finding rash vine patches, even aside from that in collecting it. Fortunately, or unfortunately if one happens to be a witless apprentice, rash vine has a number of useful applications. Salves that harm the skin or otherwise provide protection, not to mention being one of the primary ingredients for Antivan fire. My advice? Use thick gloves and carry a sword. From Herbology in Thedas by Master Ilian Gravir. What? What is this? Inez, you've got competition. Someone's sniffing about your patch. Witherstalk. Elodia. I said you could take a few components for your personal use. I'm certain I didn't say you could empty our stores. Enchanter Inez looked like she was shitting hog nuts when she noticed. Do you know how long it took to collect that with a stalk? I know what you're doing with it. No one needs that many warming drafts. I'm locking the chest. Find your own with a stalk. Or perhaps either you or Ferrin could try to stick to your own quarters. A note written by Apprentice Varilin of the Ferelden Circle. Make a Vera, that is not what's going on. All the wither stalk in the chest was dried anyway, and you know it's only eff I I know this word. This is a word I know, but I just have trouble pronouncing. Efficacious as a preservative when the sap is fresh. I'm more interested in its effects on the mind when combined with certain other plants. Inez knows all about it. Just ask her. She probably forgot that I'd already told her, old bat. And please, Ferrin and I are more than able to amuse ourselves without resorting to the tired to the tired old dip and stir. Maybe if you got out of the botanical section and looked at other books. Apprentice Elodia's reply. Flipping heck. <laughs> it's, it's all go in the Ferelden circle. I mean, Anders said as much. Anders said everyone was boinking everyone. Let's be honest. Okie doke. There we go. Yes, I am out of time for this episode. In the next one, we make a return to Ver Bellinaris for a little bit of grave robbing. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.